after the death of General Yamashita, stories about his possession of one of the greatest treasures of all time quickly spread like wildfire. In 1953, President Elpidio Quirino announced that he would release some imprisoned Japanese in the Philippines for war crimes in exchange for Japan's cooperation in an official probe to determine whether or not Yamashita had indeed left behind billions of dollars worth of treasure in the Philippines. American-Japanese Minori Fukimitsu headed the inquiry. He also worked as one of the investigators of the Allied War Crime Tribunal. Nine months later, all that was unearthed, according to Fukimitsu, were a few old coins. Before leaving the Philippines, he said that they found no evidence to show the treasure ever existed. In 1955, the Philippine and Japanese governments started another cooperation. This time, it was a marine project to salvage around 269 Japanese vessels that sank during the war. About 124 vessels were located in Manila Bay, while they found the rest in other parts of the country. As soon as the operation started, rumors began to spread that the vessels were filled with gold and then deliberately scuttled for future retrieval. But none of these rumors were verified. Undoubtedly, the rumor mongers were inspired by the little-known story of the ill-fated Japanese ship, the Awa Maru. This could also have been the reason why Fukimitsu kept denying the existence of the treasure. The fewer people knew about the treasure's existence, the better for Fukimitsu's bosses. On April 1, 1945, at 10 p.m., U.S. Commander Charles Laughlin of the submarine Quinfish sighted a Japanese destroyer called the Awamaru and immediately ordered his crew to fire on the enemy ship. According to the sole survivor, the vessel that sank was a hospital ship painted with huge white crosses which had a mission to deliver Red Cross packages to Allied prisoners of war in Hong Kong Saigon, Singapore, and other areas, and then pick up wounded Japanese soldiers and bring them back to Japan. Later, they discovered that the ship carried with it an inventory of 40 tons of gold, 12 tons of platinum, 2,000 tons of tungsten, 3,000 tons of tin, 3,000 tons of rubber in bales, 2,000 tons of lead, 8,000 tons of titanium, 500 tons of brass and bronze, 2 tons of quicksilver, and 150,000 carats of diamonds, 40 cases of jewelry, and numerous crates of art, all plundered by the Japanese occupation forces. Again, Fukumitsu denied that the Awamaru was a treasure ship. Charles MacDougald the man tasked by the Aquino administration to find out the truth both about the legendary treasure of Yamashita and the Marcos Gold disagrees with Fukumitsu. In 1970, interest in the fabled Yamashita treasure renewed with discovery of a golden Buddha by Rogelio Rojas from the mountains surrounding Baguio. This time, Fukumitsu did not come out with a denial. Rogelio Rojas, a locksmith from Baguio, started treasure hunting in 1962. He waited around the province of Nueva Vizcaya, Nueva Ecija, Cagayan, and Pinatubo area, but never found more than a few old coins and some Japanese weapons and ammunition. In May 1970, a Japanese named Fushigami gave Roger a map showing a treasure site. Fushigami claimed to have been a part of a war corps of engineers who had buried some treasure at the height of the Yamashita's retreat. Aside from this rare discovery by Rojas, no other evidence indicating that the treasure of Yamashita existed was ever found. 
Clearly, the Japanese succeeded in shipping everything that was looted to Japan. It was to be Tokyo's solid investment and contribution to the all-powerful rulers of the world, the Illuminati, which helped transform Japan into a superpower despite its humiliating defeat in the hands of the Allied forces. Others, however, insisted that the bulk of the missing treasure was still in the Philippines. Some linked the fabled wealth to Marcos Gold. <laughs>